everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing crucial information about the medication known as metformin. Its brand name is Glucophage. If you stick around for the duration of the video, we'll touch on the mechanism of action or how this medication works. We'll talk about indications or reasons we would prescribe this medication to a patient. We'll touch on precautions and warnings, as well as contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe metformin to a patient. Finally, we'll finish off this video by talking about examples of dosing as well as side effects. Before I get started, if at any point during this video you find the information to be valuable, please consider leaving a like on this video as it really helps me get this information out to other people and helps grow this channel. As well, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. First, let's talk about how this medication works. So metformin is an antihyperglycemic agent. It improves glucose tolerance in patients with type 2 diabetes. It lowers both basal and postprandial plasma glucose by decreasing hepatic glucose production and intestinal absorption. It improves insulin sensitivity by increasing peripheral glucose uptake and utilization. Metformin does not modify insulin secretion. So now that we know how this medication works, let's now take a look at indications or when we would prescribe this medication to a patient. So the most common time we see this medication prescribed is in type 2 diabetes. There's also an off-label indication that it can be prescribed to treat polycystic ovary syndrome. Now before somebody was to use metformin, there are some contraindications that they must clear. The first contraindication would be if somebody had a hypersensitivity or allergy to metformin or any other component of the formulation. It would also be contraindicated in patients with severe renal impairment, although some physicians may still choose to give a small dose, and it would lastly be contraindicated in acute or chronic metabolic acidosis. Once a patient has cleared the contraindications and is going to be prescribed metformin and start using it, there are some precautions and warnings that they should be made aware of. So first off for precautions, it should be noted that hypoxic states, such as acute congestive heart failure, may increase the risk of lactic acidosis. Use with insulin may increase the risk of hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, and hypoglycemia may occur with insufficient calorie intake or strenuous exercise. There's an increased risk in the elderly population. Patients should be made aware that low B12 levels may occur, and we should avoid the use of this medication in patients with evidence of hepatic or liver disease due to an increased risk of lactic acidosis. And caution should be used in patients undergoing surgery. Now after a patient is made aware of the precautions and warnings and they start to use metformin, they can expect to receive their dose orally. Let's now take a look at examples of dosing. So first off, in type 2 diabetes, the initial dose would typically be 500 milligrams orally twice daily or 850 milligrams orally once daily. The dose can be adjusted in increments of 500 milligrams weekly or 850 milligrams every two weeks if needed. The typical maximum dose would be 2,250 milligrams per day. And it should be noted here that doses over 2,000 milligrams per day may be better tolerated if given in three divided doses. In polycystic ovary syndrome, 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams may be given orally in divided doses. Now as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using metformin, so I'll go over some of those here now. So diarrhea may occur in 53% of patients using the immediate release formulation, while it may only occur 10 to 13% of the time in patients using the extended release version of metformin. Flatulence may occur 12% of the time, and 7% of patients may experience indigestion. Malabsorption syndrome may happen up to 10% of the time, and up to 7% may experience nausea. Up to 26% of patients may experience vomiting. Asthenia or abnormal weakness may happen around 9% of the time, and around 6% of patients may experience a headache. Some more serious but rare side effects would be lactic acidosis or hepatitis. That's all we're going to talk about today with metformin or glucophage. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's it for today. Take care.